I'm just going to show you how to set up the traditional sewing frame. Uh, people often say it looks like a medieval instrument of torture. Well, it isn't, but um, one can see what they mean. You have these two uh, screws, and uh, yeah, I've just that was for tying on my little uh, sewing keys, which are ivory and rather nice. Um, there are these screws with the uh, turning piece here, and they screw into the edge of the frame. I'll just move it over a little bit so you can see. That's one of them. Then the other goes in the other end. And I just need to remove my sewing keys. And here's my little set of five sewing keys. I'm pretty sure they're bone, not illegal ivory. Um, but they are nice. They came with the sewing frame. So I'm quite fond of them. Uh, usually they're brass, but these were obviously cut specially. The crossbar rests over the screw pieces. I'm just going to move this back a bit so you can see a bit better. And I'll just move this back a bit so that you can see how the frame works. The crossbar lies across these screws. And uh, in fact, I'm going to angle it a little bit so you can see a bit better. That's, that's a bit better. Um, and on here, the, the crossbar can be altered by moving the screw thing up and down. And well, I have some strings across here, bits of cord, which to which you can tie um, the cords that I'm going to set up on here. Um, I'll just do that and then come back. Sewing cords again. So here we go. Uh, I've got the sewing key down on the level of the bottom of the base and the cord wraps around a couple of times and then the whole key turns over and takes the cord in, as it were, between its legs so that I can then push the whole thing down in between the two bits of board with the slot in the middle. Let that go a little bit, I think. And then I can twist it round Except it doesn't seem to want to go for some reason. That's tiresome. I shall bring it up that way. There we go. And I'll just turn it up so you can see what's happening at the bottom. The key is holding the cord in place underneath so that it's absolutely taut here. If you alter the screw, you can loosen it, but generally you can tighten it. And for a big book, I would put do that all the way along. It's a lot more practical to use one of these little ones, uh, which is just a piece of board, a homemade one, with um, a sort of, what do you call it, um, bar across and some side pieces with wing nuts, which are adjustable, um, which come up and down, and you can tie your threads, to the, your cords to the cords on the bar here or just across. Um, it's a lot simpler and smaller than the big sewing frames. Um, a refinement is to have a bar across the bottom with wing nuts and when you tie your cord onto the top, which I'll do in a moment, um, you can put the cord underneath the wing nut bar as well, rather than having to pin it in or tie, tap, um, tie it on with sellotape. Attach it with sellotape, I should say. So I'm just going to tie uh, a cord on here and this will then be I need a bit less than that. You do need to leave enough to lace onto your boards if you're sewing with cords. Um, so you don't want to end your cord right down at the bottom, just just here. You want plenty to go through the through the boards. So I'm just going to thread this in behind. Don't seem to want to go, so I'll just push it through with a palette knife. And I turn it round. You can see that one can just pull it, pull it through quite easily, and then when I've got the other ones on, just tighten the wing nuts. I'll put the other ones on, and then I'll come back and demonstrate the cord sewing. Here I've got the sewing frame now set up. The side keys, I can the side wing nuts, I can now tighten because this is now upright. I've got my three cords in the right place for the little book I'm going to do, which is this one. I've already got the sections marked, the sections marked up for where I want the cords to be. 
and they're firmly held on in place by the wing nut down here, which um, just a, a much simpler way of doing everything. You can, if you want, attach them up here with the same kind of principle. A bar and a couple of wing nuts across the back would also hold these in position. Just a word about cord. I'm using um, hemp cord. It's um, This is how many strands? Oh, about six or eight, I think. Uh, if you have... Uh, if you actually want, if your cord is too thick and you want a thinner one, it's perfectly possible to unravel it, untwist it, and separate out the cord so that you have a thinner cord of the number you want. That would be, yes, it's six, so that's three that side and three the other. Um, don't just pull them apart; it just get in a tangle. But if you untwist it, you can then separate them out, and that's good if you want. And then, when, if you just let them twist up again, you'll have to lots of thinner cords, which um, may be more manageable depending on what you're doing. Same thing applies if you've got, um, if you want a thicker cord and your cord is too thin, you'd untwist them both together and then let them ravel up together. I'm not doing that very well, but if you just allow them to re-ravel themselves, um, you can then use them together as a, as a thick cord. Uh, but you also get thick cord and that's, uh, that's about the thickest, I think, that that you're ever likely to need. This is a little book which is um, 17th century, I think, 18th century, I can't remember. Um, it's um, 18th century, I think. Uh, yes, 1782. Um, and so I'm going to do it with a uh, with cords on it. I quite like doing old books with cords. I know a lot of people will only use tapes, but um, it doesn't really matter. But it's quite useful to know how they work, because if you're doing restoration, you'll often come across uh, books which are on cords, and you need to know what to do to restore them. So the principle of sewing is exactly the same as with the tapes. This loose... No, it's OK. That I'll firm up later on. Um, the sewing path is exactly the same but you've just got to go around the cords. Uh, sometimes you will have sawn in cords and uh, you will have a hole across the, the, the sawn in groove um, which has got a place. Um, it can be useful. Uh, it's a lot easier if you haven't sewn on cords before because you don't have to worry about keeping the cord straight but in this case I'm going to have the cord raised up and so proud of the sections. So I will start as with the tapes, with the book as if to read, push it sideways and turn the first section over and I will find the middle of the section, knock it up to the head and lay it against the cords um, which should be in the right place. I'll just actually check that because Okay, it's a bit difficult to see. There are so many marks with an old book on the back. Um, I'm just going to turn this round so that you can see it a bit more easily. That's how they're lying now. So I go in at the kettle stitch and I need to come out at the cord and come round it so that I'm coming, I'm coming round it on the further side. sure what I'm doing with end papers so I'll just leave that and if I need to attach a cord later I will. And if I just hold it up so you, you can see what I'm... No, I can't do that. I haven't got enough hand. Um, I'm just coming round the cord and going into the section on the other side of the cord. Try not to get the needle through the thread that you've just come... that's just come through. Otherwise you won't be able to pull it tight. But the principle is the same. You're just going out at the next cord or tape, whatever it is, and you need to follow your pencil marks. If you don't, you'll find the cord will wander all over the back of the book, and that's a bit irritating. Um, needs a lot of surgery at the end. I'm just going to check that that is in... Yeah, that is actually on the... I will turn this around later on so you can see from the other side as well. 
and come out of the kettle switch. And that doesn't change, that is exactly what you do the whole way along. But if I turn it around now, you can see that each, each cord has now got a thread which runs round to the inside, comes round the cord and goes back in again in each case. So you need to make sure as you go along that each is taut because if you pull from the end now you're only going to tighten up your first two. So just make sure everything is reasonably firm. A nice version, a nice example here of the section letter. This is B and the catchword, sorry, the key, yes, the catchword, um, which will tell you what the next uh, page is saying which is indeed D, so that's good. And find the middle, make sure you've got all the bits out, and which of course should have been done earlier, and make sure it's absolutely level, lay it on top of the others and come back the other way. And I think I'm going to stop there and turn the whole thing round. I think if I hold it like this, you ought to be able to see what I'm doing from this side as well. So thread is coming out. far side of the the far side of the cord and round the cord and back in again. But the general principle of sewing of keeping your left hand inside and your right hand outside. Um, difficult with the sewing frame, of course, especially certainly those big ones, to get across anyway. So to some extent the sewing frame is, uh, exerts a bit more discipline, but um, for little books I find these little homemade sewing frames so much easier and just um, a bit more practical much easier to carry around. When you had your sewing frame set up, of course, um, and you were doing nothing else, that's another matter. Um, I get to the end of the first, second section rather, make sure everything's firm and tie my reef knot. Take my third section, again, nice example of the nice example of the section letter, which here is repeated. C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. And that's the middle of the section. Which means it is a duodecimo book. When the pages, rather than being folded into two and then four and then six and uh, then eight were folded into two and then three so that you get what is called the twelve mo or the duodecimo um, where you have this rather long narrow format. Uh, just an interesting method, uh, point of, I suppose as it's poetry perhaps it was um, more suitable to a long narrow page. Anyway that's the method of sewing on cords. I won't go on showing you this, it just goes on and um, I shall eventually put a leather cover on this, a leather spine anyway, um, which is why I'm doing it on cords. As I said, a lot of modern bookbinders don't like using cords at all. Um, I just find them rather fun. I uh, certainly just do it because I like using them. Um, but tapes are perfectly acceptable. You can, you can use a tape and then put a um, false band on if you want to have the um, effect of cords across the spine, but uh, I see no reason not to have the real thing if, you, um, if it happens to be convenient, and uh, in this case I think it is reasonably so. So that's the end of the third section. I'll do my kettle stitch, and then I will continue as uh, just like that uh, to the end of the book. <laughs>